this is our first class on portfolio we're going to be discussing portfolio and portfolio management types of portfolio management objective of portfolio management principles theories portfolio return for one and two asset portfolio portfolio risk for one and two asset portfolio portfolio stock valuation capital market line and security market line so from this place is where we have the calculations okay from here we have come so these are just introductory concepts of what portfolio theory is all about portfolio is a collection of investments like stocks shares bonds mutual funds it could be cash just um, a collection of investments in an investor's basket okay and portfolio management is the art of managing portfolio very simple the concept is to maximize return for a certain amount of risk okay so the concept of portfolio management is to maximize return and minimize risk now what are the types of portfolio management we have active portfolio management we have passive portfolio management we have discretionary portfolio management and we have the non-discretionary the types of portfolio management explains portfolio management with regards to the portfolio manager or the investor okay so the investor can employ a portfolio manager for a passive portfolio management it means that the portfolio manager is not actively involved in the day-to-day -day buying and selling or management of the portfolio for discretionary it means that the portfolio manager has the right to use his discretion to take decision on behalf of the investor while the opposite is the non-discretionary portfolio management where the investor reserves the full right to make decisions on what he would do with the stocks or the securities in his portfolio okay so you can be an investor and you can have a portfolio containing different kind of investments just like you can have many stocks you can buy shares in nestle you can buy shares in cadbury you can buy shares in dangote so all of this um so all of these different shares that you have together can form your own portfolio. Um, objectives of portfolio management. You are trying to reduce risk, first of all. You're trying to manage risk. Hmm? Risk is the chance of a loss. Risk is the probability that a negative occurrence will occur. It's not a positive thing. The risk for investing in Nestle alone might be greater than the risk that you would have if you are investing in Nestle, Cadbury, and Dangote all together. Does it make sense? So when you're managing your portfolio, okay, you're trying to say, what is the weight I should put in Nestle? How much of my money should I put in Cadbury? Okay, so you're trying to diversify risk. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. Um, the next thing you're trying to do is to stabilize your income. Um, the next thing is to maintain your principal. Another objective of portfolio management is to keep your capital or to make your capital appreciate. Maybe you have 100 million to put into investment. You want your capital to grow. You want the share prices to grow. You want to be able to reinvest those income to give you capital appreciation. It's just English. <laughs> um, another objective of portfolio management is for you to get tax savings. Okay, So there are some tax laws or some tax opportunities that favors investors okay so when you're able to manage your portfolio very well you can claim tax savings let's talk about the principles of portfolio management so there are two basic principles of portfolio management we have number one effective investment planning and number two we have constant review of investment so these are the two basic principles of portfolio management what's principle principle is something guiding you what you live by so you're saying if you must manage your portfolio correctly you have to live by two principles and what are those two principles effective investment planning and constant review of the investment so this is more like the beginning stage you have to plan your investment okay you have to look at the fiscal policy you have to look at the economy you're investing in um the cbn rates anything that can affect you like the regulations you have to plan okay because you're not investing in isolation you are investing in a particular economy so all those inflation rates interest rates you have to consider that because they can affect your investment greatly and the second principle that you have to live by if you're trying to 
achieve portfolio management is constant review of investment so you have to constantly review your investments you have to check the financial statements of the company you are trying to invest in or that you've invested in yeah it's constant review so you've already invested in them and you have to check the trend analysis you have to check the demand <laughs> those are things that are internal what's the demand what's happening in the market how are the stocks performing in the market what's the management of the company like all those things you need to continue to review that's why it's called constant review of investment your village people they are followed you here. um so the next thing we'll talk about is theories of portfolio this one i know it has been examined in november 2014 okay theories of portfolio so what are the theories let me clean the board the first portfolio theory is efficient market theory the second one is the random work theory and the third one is the modern portfolio theory. I think you should actually write this down. Efficient market theory. First of all, what is a theory? A theory is just anybody's idea, anybody's proposition, anybody's claim. Somebody said this and people live by that theory. So this is it. There are different portfolio theories. Hmm? We have the efficient market. This one was examined. This efficient market theory. Sorry for that noise. This efficient market theory was actually examined in November 2014. And what does this efficient market theory say? The efficient market theory holds that stocks always trade at their fair value, such that they reflect all information. And it is impossible for an investor to outperform the market by selling stocks at an inflated price or buying undervalued stock. And the only way that an investor can outperform the market or can maximize his return is by taking a higher level of risk. Say stock A, stock B, stock C, all of these stocks will trade at their fair value and they reflect the same information to every investor interested in these stocks do you understand so you as an investor cannot outperform the market or cannot make more returns than another investor because you have one special information somewhere so that's the efficient market theory okay saying that the market is efficient and how is the market efficient because it gives everybody the same information and these um, stocks they trade at their fair value you cannot sell your stocks at an inflated price neither can you buy undervalued stocks because everything is trading at fair value so wherever a is trading at um 20 naira other places it is trading at 20 naira i don't know if it makes sense just try to understand it that way that efficient market theory holds that stock prices trade at their fair value and they reflect the same information to all investors such that another investor cannot outperform the market okay and if it wants to outperform the market it needs to take a higher level of risk and it makes sense that the higher the risk the higher the return i'm sure you've heard that before um let's talk about the levels of this efficient market theory because it was even in that november 2014 question they said that the efficient market theory comes in different levels i mean the information with respect to the inf information it comes in different levels it can be weak right so there could be weak efficiency i'll explain weak efficiency there can be semi-strong efficiency and then there can be the strong efficiency right so this is with respect to the information this green marker is so it's just everywhere um so the weak efficiency is saying that it reflects only past information. Okay, this first level, it reflects only the past information. Hmm? This one reflects both the past information, that is the semi-strong, reflects the past information and all publicly available information. Okay, the first level reflects the past information. The second level, which is the semi-strong efficiency or the semi-strong form of efficiency, reflects the past information and the public information while the strong level of efficiency re reflects both the past information the public information and every privately owned information you know all those insider information so what this is saying is that eh, you can have stocks that are showing weak efficiency they'll tell you only past information historical stories okay in 2018 the stock traded at this do you understand um you can have semi-strong they'll tell you past information and public information every information that is happening currently about that stock then the strong efficiency it is very efficient to give you everything so all this information the summary is that all this information is available to every investor and everybody's on the same level so for you to do better than the other investor Eh? Under this efficient market theory, you have to take more risk. 
let's go to the next one the random work theory what does it say it says that the stock prices they move randomly they are saying this efficient market theory what are you saying it's not like that though. but they move randomly they just move as they like they follow an unpredictable path so it is impossible to use past information to determine the future trend of a stock just like random work theory they'll be providing you past information an investor can say let me use this information to my advantage but in random work theory it is not like that although in the random work theory they said that for you to outperform the market or to make higher returns you have to take higher level of risk okay so in these three theories you have to take a higher level of risk to outperform the market which is a normal or a general principle that to make more returns you have to take more risk now let's go to the modern portfolio theory very simple the modern portfolio theory focuses on two things okay they are saying that it is an investor's goal to maximize return for any level of risk so any level of risk that an investor is taking he or she wants to maximize return which is normal okay and the next thing is that risk can be minimized or diversified you know diversified is the right word risk can be diversified by investing in different kinds of assets with unrelated risk okay so you cannot be investing in umbrella industry hmm? and then you're also investing in raincoat industry and you're also investing in what do you use during the rain say boots industry they are all in the same like they all have the same risk because in the dry season the business of this one will drop business will drop here yeah. who will buy boots in dry season do you understand so the first thing i said is that under this theory the focus is on two things investors want maximum return for any level of risk that they take the second thing is that to maximize your return you have to invest in diversified businesses businesses that do not have the same risk or that do not have the same correlation okay so the modern portfolio theory is governed by four principles <laughs> four principles number one all investors are risk averse how will you assume that all investors are risk averse can you see that okay let me write it here modern portfolio theory they have four four principles or four assumptions no assumptions okay they said all investors are risk averse number two they said investors are rational I agree with this one number three is that all investors have the same access to information or they have access to the same information right and the fourth assumption is that returns are normally distributed returns are normally distributed so that's everything on which one do we just do now um where is it this one portfolio theory the next thing is portfolio return now we're going into calculation the part i would enjoy um portfolio return so you have one asset portfolio and two assets or more portfolio when i mean one asset portfolio it means that it's just one asset that is in that portfolio now two assets portfolio you have two assets in that portfolio you have invested in shares in many companies does it make sense so now let's go to portfolio return how do you calculate portfolio return okay we'll continue that in our next class so that this video is not too long portfolio return for one asset portfolio there are three major ways of calculating your portfolio return number one is the simple average number two is the probability method and number three is the holding period method the simple average method uses the historical information so you're trying to calculate the return on a particular portfolio on a one asset portfolio 